up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gen Report, where we bring you the reviews, news, and clues of what's going on in the superhero genre. I'm back. We're back. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. We got a lot to go over. First, we're going to go with some. We're going to go over some reviews with Invincible and Mortal Kombat, and then we get into some news, some very great news, especially today that just recently came out with the Eternals and the Phase Four, pretty much. And and I got to say, man, that I've watched that trailer over and over again because it's it's just with Stan Lee in the cut. Oh my god! But let's get into it, Brian. How you doing? Good, man. I am still processing the highs and lows of what I watched last week. It is as good an ending to a season or a show as I think you could put together. Oh, by even though I was prepared for it by you, this frustration with the logo that's behind me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That. But then. You know, so glad we we waited a little bit because the phase four, as always, Marvel, you know, they, they give you that taste, they give you that little extra bit and they get you ready. The few, the few new shots we got, mm. more than enough. <laughs> Listen, we'll get into how, what the Eternals look like. What we oh my God. anyway, let's get into it. <laughs> Invincible. I don't know if you guys have watch it or uh, have not watched it if you haven't watched it you're doing yourself a disservice especially if you're a part of this genre and you haven't watched the invincibles the invincible show it is tremendous although we didn't like the episode six. previous to this right six, six was the, the one drag kind of yeah. yeah but looking back to it i understood okay. some of the the bigger plot points that they were okay. going for and this last episode, what was the, what was the episode before this one? I forget, because this last episode, I forgot pretty much everything that happened before. Well, well, episode seven is Debbie kind of going to Cecil and then cracking Omni-Man. Ultimately, he fights the Kaiju because Robot kind of gets rebuilt and unleashed, and it leads to the, you know, sort of the reveal of the reveal, which is yeah. we knew Omni-Man was doing what he was doing, but Mark did it. And so we get the cliffhanger ending of the two of them face to face. And Omni Man says, We need to talk. After yeah. He dispatches the immortal for how many times he's. Yeah. But, uh, so that, so yeah, seven was great. I mean, seven was a great setup. Yeah. And man, I mean, we, we spent last week talking about the disappointment and how Falcon Winter Soldier kind of went out. I hate to say it, but I finally have something for Marvel to take notes on. I'm telling you, this, man. This is how this is how you end, end it. Season. Yeah, yeah. It it was enjoyable from beginning to end, man. Although, regardless of how gruesome and how like this episode made you think about life, man. This made this episode made you think about how precious. And how lucky we are to be alive, but to cherish the moments that we have. Cause wow. It was, it was, yo, you I had to take a drink after this. It was, it was, it was really, it was really impactful. And what was even more impactful at the end, although Omni Man was going in on it. So spoilers, if you haven't seen it, spoilers, spoiler review, you have five seconds to to go away. Um, at the end, that thought that um, that 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 talk, I guess that 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 memory that he had of his child, of Mark when he was a kid and playing, and and just thinking about that moment, despite him destroying him throughout the whole episode, it was that memory that sort of made him leave and stop what he was doing. But prior to that, all that stuff that he was doing with Mark and just letting him know, like, and it was just like, he really dug deep into humanity, <laughs> right? And 
show them how how um what was the word he showed mark how fragile fragile the human the human race is and that was that train sequ- every you know it was it was just really it was a, it was a tough it was a tough watch but it was like wow it was wow it was a wow so i texted you something to this effect but and i was half joking the fight well it's not even fair to call it a fight the massacre that yeah. laid on mark in the in the in the opening scenes of this i mean it made man of steel ending look like a bar fight yeah I mean, the amount of destruction on a global basis, but to your point, it, it's this really perverse, like, teaching moment that Omni Man is continually trying to show him, like, the error of his faith in humanity by destroying large sections of humanity. I mean, the train scene is as disturbing an image. I don't care if it's animated or not. Like, whoever sat around and wrote that. Obviously, with Robert Kirkman, I'm assuming in the original comic because I haven't read the comic. But I mean, you got to go to a dark place to come up with that as an idea, and to see it on screen, I was like, they're not really going to do that for the entire train, and then they did, and I was like, wow, yeah. So it's but it goes to the point of it's violence and mass destruction, but it has purpose, right? It has this theme and this story of father and son different values raised in different worlds and it's being carried through and I it made me think back to the very beginning of the show when Omni Man tells Mark you're invincible and he means it from a physical standpoint. Yeah. I think we see in the sequence Mark is invincible, but it's his spirit that's invincible because he has no chance physically yeah. in this fight. His dad could probably kill him at any time if he really wanted to. And yeah. he just will not give when he said you'll have nothing left after the many years you've lived and he told them i'll still have you that's family though right i mean that is the essence of family is that you just don't let go of those bonds, even no matter how dark a place it goes to wow wow That was that was that was a fantastic. Episode. I haven't seen it again because I got the gist of the the, the episode, right? Um, it was a very powerful episode. It, you know, I have been on this Vader Luke analogy all the way through, and and I kept thinking about that in the scene of like the duel at the Empire Strikes Back, where Luke has no chance, and Vader's just playing with him the whole yeah. time, but he he. He can't bring himself to quite kill him. Even at the very end when he cuts off his hand and, and he's kind of talking him into joining him. He wants him to join him, yeah. Like, this scene was like, imagine if we were inside Vader's helmet. And like, experiencing every second of it. That's what it felt like to me. We were getting like the emotional side of something similar to that. And you're right, Mark, he kind of wins. He wins by losing. He wins by not yielding. Yeah. He forces Omni Man to re-engage with his hum- that shred of humanity that we flash back to, and he he quits his post. Now we don't know exactly what's going to happen from this, but yeah, that's what I remember. But Mark is invincible, but it's 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 his humanity and his spirit that make him invincible, not his yeah yeah not his alien powers, and that I think ultimately winds up being kind of the, one of the more powerful. In, in that scene, but I mean, when it was going on, I was just like, "Oh, this is one of those where it kept going, and and as it kept going, I think the impact actually kept increasing. It yeah. didn't feel too long. It actually was adding something as it was happening." Yeah. yeah. And when it finished, there was I, I checked because uh, when it finished, when that whole fight sequence ended, Omni Man left. I looked to see how much more we had left to go, and we we had quite a bit of time left to go. And it, just the ending of it and coming to terms of what had happened after he left and the other characters, um, 
I guess the, the Guardians of the Globe banding more closer together after witnessing what they have saw and, and you know, and Mark and his, his mom, um, I guess being closer now and his friends and it, it was just, everything came to an end. And then I, uh, Seth Rogen, who plays a character, uh, who voices the character of Alan, I believe his name is. Yeah. Um, and they have that conversation and they, he says something that they have been trying to form an alliance to fight the Viltrumites. Because from what you saw, and, and I like the way they, they went back in history and stuff like that and show how the, what the Viltrumites are and what they, they, they've been doing. Which reminded me sort of about sort of a, 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 like Krypton. That oh, they go, that? yeah. Zod and Zod and bloodlines are pure yeah yeah yeah. and they want to form an alliance so i'm pretty sure and i'm just guessing here that probably at the end of season two or season three it's all out battle against the filter mites um but i'm just looking forward to seeing second and third season of this i was so elated when when they that got announced the other, the other brutal twist in the middle of the fight that I just wanted to call out is when he's trying to save the people in the building, the mom and the kid. And he and like, you've seen this scene a billion times before, and the hero always figures it out. Yeah. But when they show that it didn't work out, I was like, wow. wow. Like, just the feeling, like the personal responsibility he would feel and just trying to save those two people and his dad prevents him from doing that effectively and he has yeah. to watch them die like right in front of it i was just it was awful. it was just like this is you know disturbing and yeah i think mark obviously is going to learn a tremendous amount from this and i think throughout this season you see him fight that feeling of wanting to be a superhero and wanting to be a regular person. And having the responsibility of a hero, he has to do everything that he can to A, save lives and to avoid conflict, to do whatever, but to not end up where he's ended up right now. And so I, in the second season, we're, I, I'm pretty sure we're gonna see a transformation of him as a hero. Well, I love the montage at the end, which is, I think, great shows and great setup to do this, where there was that galactic element. We saw kind of like all these species and characters that we had at least touched on in the different episodes. Kind of got a glimpse of what they're up to. Yeah. You know, they're all going to be back, right? They're all going to be back <laughs> yeah. in some form. And I thought that was exciting. And then we got kind of the montage of the people on Earth, right? The yeah. of the globe and some of the main hu you know, human characters we're going to spend some time with. So I really liked how they kind of gave us a little nod to each of those. It's like a reminder of like, we got all these threads set up for you. Yeah. We got to go. Now, I do have to ask you, what did you think about... Cecil telling them we're putting stuff in the water and it prevents you from seeing the light <laughs> in this all this world right in front of you. I mean, a lot of conspiracy theorists will probably be like, aha, uh -huh, you see? <laughs> they didn't get that from in, just anywhere. They, this is something that's happening. And <laughs> it's like, all right. <laughs> now, what did we see, though, in that lab? Because that was kind of cool. Did, did that imply that they had used his blood? to figure out some kind of weaponry? Because it showed them kind of like cutting up some pretty... Yeah, I don't know. I think that was just showing things that they were up to and, and things that nobody really can see. I don't know where that lab was located. Yeah, it really was all around whatever hospital facility he was in, but I don't. Clear, it wasn't clear to me. It seemed like he was in a facility where the organization was operating. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I gotta watch that part again because that was a bit confusing. I don't know if I looked away and saw back, and I'm like, "What the hell is this?" Um, but Within obviously, the immortals yeah, they're putting again, him back right? together again. Yeah. So listen, again, if you haven't watched it, I'm sure you have. Some most of you have it. If you haven't watched it, 
and you're listening to us, we spoiled it for you, but still is an amazing watch. We can't it, spoil it for you. There's nothing it, we could say that would it, actually prepare you. You got to see it. You just got to see it. Brian, for me, this show is an eight. Five out of five stars, if I have to give it an eight. If I have to give it a letter, a five stars, everything. This is a fantastic show. Well, let's let's look at it because first off, this was renewed. So this found an audience, which credit to this show because it's a comic, but not exactly like a mainline comic. So this was entirely built on the merits really of how this was acted and how this was drawn and how this was presented. So they got us the care. The level was incredibly high. Like I said, I think we would probably classify seven of the eight episodes as being excellent, one as being okay. Yeah. I'm guessing we don't have to debate what the best episode was. Eight <laughs> is far and away the best episode. Yeah, yeah. And I'll just say, like, I don't know if you can win an Emmy or an animated Wow. Race, but J.K. Simmons... We talked about him mailing it in. in the, maybe he mailed it in the, in the Justice League because he was saving all of his fire. Yeah. I cannot imagine anyone else doing, doing that, yeah. that character. The voice sold you on so much of what was going on. It was yeah. awesome. Yeah. yeah. I, I, the voice cast was fantastic. Everything about the show was great. Um, again, I can't wait. To, to see the second and, and, and third season of this uh it, it was just it was just amazing I, I i loved it very much and i was i i was looking forward to friday more so for this show than i was for falcon and the winter soldier uh, on fridays even though falcon and the winter soldier was fantastic but I, again this invincible the way they ended it off is something that marvels take note is that they have to go a little bit further and, and dig a little deeper and giving us an ending that is a satisfactory and b makes us look forward to the next season if they are attempting to do so yeah i mean amazon right i mean very quietly the boys invincible and spending about 500 billion dollars <laughs> for the rings <laughs> they might actually have they might have a very nice set of ip here Oh my God! Yeah, yeah that little by little they they're chipping away and getting people to sign up and see what they got to offer. Um, they're doing a, they're doing a hell of a job doing so. Let us know what you guys think in the comment section below about episode eight of Invincible and an entire series. And are you looking forward to seasons uh, two and three? Next up. This will be a little faster of a review. Mortal Kombat. So you say. I have a lot of thoughts. Okay. <laughs> I won't say much. <laughs> I said what I said last I week. Say all good. I just <laughs> Tell me what you thought about Mortal Kombat. Again, if you didn't watch the last show, I'll reiterate. I fell asleep halfway through it and saw the second half and... To me, it was a terrible movie, terribly edited. Dialogue was horrible. What? Tell me what you thought. Yeah. Uh, what a waste. Um, to go to this well and come up with this. I, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just rattle through my list. Please, please chime in. Okay. Uh, mostly these. these I'm going to rattle through my list of gripes, but then I'm going to try to this movie in the context of what they did as opposed to just remaking the whole movie. So I'll start at the top. Paul Young, I told you this when we first saw the first footage or trailer. I, I said, what do you think about having a non-game character in this? Yeah. He was off. That character to me was a zero and worthless. I don't know why he <laughs> for the script. And memo to people if you're going to write a new character into a multi-billion dollar video game franchise, there's one simple question you have to ask yourself. If this character really was in the game, would anyone want to play as this character? Because ain't nobody would choose that guy with his 80s Masters of the Universe <laughs> metal jacket and his two little nightsticks. Yeah. yeah. Nobody would choose. So, 
I was afraid this character was going to be completely superfluous, and I think he was. I think yeah. it was immediately the movie's on a wrong foot because that character does not need to be in the movie. So I don't really think that's fixable. Yeah. If you had any other thoughts on his... I mean... I think he was just a part of the terribleness of it all, so it all blends together. I mean, he was terrible. Um, yeah, I mean, his character, I thought it would be something new for people to focus on, focus on as be, him being a new character, but his character didn't add anything new to that world or that universe that we know of Mortal Kombat. Second complaint, Sonya Blade. Okay, so this has been this mistake has been made twice now. So they get Bridget Wilson in 1995 in the movie, who was kind of having a moment. She had, she was in um, Billy Madison same year. As as far as I can tell, I mean she's married to Pete Sampras, so she's married to an all time athlete. But as far as I can tell, has no athletic ability of her. Own. <laughs> and they kind of went back to that same well here, right? They picked a, a blonde actress kind of tried to make her believable in the part. And I'm sitting there saying, come on, aren't we at a point where we can get Ronda Rousey, Gina Carano, Holly Holm, or let's go WWE, get Charlotte Flair, or Sasha Banks. Like, can't we find somebody who can actually fight yeah. and be a character on screen? Aren't we at that point for a movie like this, for a part like this, which you're going to make important, which they did in both of these films, both in 95 and here, She's got to be able to do more. So that yeah. was my second, like, just disappointed, like lost. Yeah. Third thing is, look, I mean, we talked about it last week. How can you not have a tournament in this? Yeah, I mean, it's like, I I, I thought we were going to get a tournament. I thought we were leading up to that. And then... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's clearly, I think the way they did it is because they think they're going to, I mean, maybe... Warner Brothers puts up money for a second movie. I think it's going to happen because the box office and the response has been good, even if the reviews have been bad. It was horrible. But yeah, they, 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 clearly, if they do this, they're going to do the, the tournament style um, part of it in the second one, if it ever gets off. Third gripe. I think you're going to be with me on this. Fight choreography. Horrible. This is a martial arts video game. The moves are given to you on the screen. And like, other than getting bicycle kick, scorpions thing, and you know, a couple of ice, Sub-Zero ice effects, we got nothing. Yeah. Forget the fatality stuff. These guys all had combo moves that you practiced and tried to unleash, and we didn't see any of that stuff. The fight choreography was really like street fight Really low level, like not yeah. stylish martial arts. Mm -hmm. Terrible. Considering yeah. that they hired several people who were martial artists by trade to be in this movie, the fact that we came home with not one fight that I would consider to be like memorable, memorable yeah. is disgraceful. The, it was the, the editing part of it. It was like every three seconds there was an edit. It was a different view of vantage point, and we never saw. It made me think of the old martial arts with Bruce Lee where you get you get to see them both fight yeah. and not so many cuts. It was just a fluid motion. Every time they edit, it was just for them to see that pause. But when they're fighting, you see them fight through. And this one is just a few shots, edit, cut, cut. It was three, every three seconds, there was a cut of a new shot. And it was like, it was just hard to watch. And you're right, the zoom, the camera, all wrong. Like this is especially given that you have a template. We didn't see one scene where it was like the classic backdrop game with two people <laughs> one on one with any space to work with. Not once. Yeah. They were all kind of like in dark areas wrestling basically the whole time. And <laughs> I mean I guess I also want to know who's the cop that gets the the 187 call about the giant dude with the forearms and the ponytail who's dead in the backyard of the house. <laughs> Goro apparently is dead in our world instead of our world. That's tough. Um, but no, I'll give you two small positives, which I'm a little sad weren't actually the movie. 
The one is, I thought, a good decision to make Sub Zero the main villain just because Shang Tsung, even in the game, is kind of limited. Like, he's yeah, yeah. Powerful. He doesn't do much. Yeah. But I like that. I thought the Sub Zero, uh, Joe Taslin with Sub Zero was actually pretty decent. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing, which I was actually a little bit positively surprised by, was I thought the combo of Liu Kang and Kung Lao were actually pretty entertaining. And it made me wish that had been the movie. Because Liu Kang references him being found as an orphan and raised in sort of the Temple of Light. Why yeah. didn't we get that movie? Yeah. Those two dudes, the center of this movie. Yeah. And then we kind of build the tournament around them. But I actually thought they were decent in the little yeah. bit they were on screen. Exactly. I, I agree with you with, on that part. But the horribleness of the movie just sort of, it, it was just a blanket over the whole thing. It's like, I don't care for any of it, despite sub Zero being dope. I always like, uh, I don't know his name, um, but the initial uh, Scorpion dude. Yeah, Hiyoshi yeah. Shinada. Yeah, yeah, I like him as an actor and, and as a swordsman, because he was yeah. dope in The Last Samurai. Yeah. Um, I just didn't buy the whole fact that he can say get over here and he ain't speak no English throughout the joint. All of a sudden he knows how to say get over here. So that was like weird. But I just I, I, I just think the movie was horrible. Um but you're right. Kung Lao and 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 what's the other guy's name? Luke Kang. Well Lu, so Ludi Ludi Lin was was Liu Kang. Ludi Lin was actually the runner up, I believe, for Shang for Shang Chi. So if you're wondering what Shang oh, wow. looked like, that is supposedly the guy who was second on the list. I thought they were both decent and they had some chemistry when they were kind of talk, actually yeah. talking actually talking Kano. I was like I could have done with these two guys being like a almost an Anakin Obi Wan type of you know mentor mentee, and they're kind of working their way up through the tournament. I'm like, why do we need this Cole Young guy? I don't know. It just made me frustrated that like you could write that, have decent performances, and not recognize that that was actually the movie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, any you had a, you had a four or fifth gripe. Those are the three. Those are the three big negatives, and those are the two little positives. And like, I just, I do think they're gonna get a sequel because, like I said, the the box office, the audience has been there for this, even though the the critics and I'm guessing the audience scores are not gonna wind up awesome for this. But yeah, I mean, shoot, in 1995 this... we did get look. Mortal Kombat got a sequel in 1995. <laughs> I kind of feel like this. True, 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 true. Listen, this just proves the fact or the point that everybody wants to go to the movies man people want to go to the movies and see something that's interesting mortal kombat is interesting for those individuals who play the game There's, i mean mortal kombat is a very successful video game it has a bunch of fans if you do a movie despite how horrible it is people are going to go see it and for those people who said they enjoyed them, I, like there was nothing enjoyable about this movie. You, you you could say you enjoyed it, cool. But to say that I'm gonna go back and see it in the theaters because there's people that say I'm gonna go, I'm gonna probably go back. Like that just shows the hunger for people to want to go to the movies. I think that's right. I mean, I think it's a fair statement to say I think several of the fight scenes in the 1995 version were actually better than any of the fight scenes in this one because at least in that like Robin Shu who played Liu Kang like he they did set those up as one on one with mm -hmm. a kind of alien looking backdrop so he actually does some really cool stuff in the movie even though it's a little campy but yeah. compared to this I, I found myself kind of missing some of those fights yeah yeah so let us know in the comment section below what you thought about Mortal Kombat um it was horrible uh and and i we i think i give it a two a two out of five man oh that's very generous but yeah i would go low. I would go low. <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 uh yeah let us know in the conversation below um